No. So anyways, um, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, so reason for price dumping now, right? So the longer after the V3 testnet launched, right? Because what happened on the chart when uh, this peak happened here, right? Was Mar around the week of March 20th. We, uh, Richard Hart said that uh, V3 testnet was launching, right? And everybody's happy. Yay, price pumped up from 10 to 13 cents. And it's what, you know, it's a fundamental event of, right? Um, sell the news, right? And so when you sell the news, right? After that news is, is old, if it becomes more stale and, right? You don't get more reasonable updates. You get a little negativity. That's going to what? Push the price down. So the next 10 days here um, where we have 10 to two days to two weeks, right? As we have downwards pressure possible in the market, right? Seeing really where this uh, price holds is really important just as with Bitcoin. So this area for hex, right? It's about five and a half to six and a half cents. If that area holds pretty solidly, right? Then you can expect solid upside um, uh, at least towards that 25, 20, 18 to 25 cent region, right? Later in the summer, but right, stuff like this, he says, I'm sorry for saying V3 would be the final test net. Is there a V4? Uh, I really thought it would be. <laughs> I prefer the safer and more secure public testing of what will become mainnet instead of testing in production. I choose security over rushing. I like bringing about 100% uptime and fly, fall us ops, right? So uh, this is good, right? Long term, that's great. No problem. Everybody's happy, right? Everybody in the chat's like, yeah, yeah, do what you want. You know, make sure it's good. Make sure we have 100% uptime because, yeah, we all want that, right? We don't want any mistakes. That's for damn sure. Um, but the longer that it takes for V3 to come out, right, the more downwards price pressure you have. Um, so as long as Bitcoin is in a, a downwards portion of its cycle, right, then that will bring downwards pressure to hex, all right? So just understanding how that function works is important because the older that hex becomes, the more correlated it becomes to other assets. And as Pulse Chain launches, the other thing you're going to see is that um, assets hexagons own, such as Hex, will become more correlated to the wider crypto market as adoption grows, but as they also diversify to more coins, because what Pulse Chain is going to do for the hardcore hexagons is it's going to say it's okay to have other coins. It's okay, you know, to try other stuff in the Pulse Chain ecosystem. And, and once you do that, right, there's they're going to start to have other assets in the space and then correlation comes in. It's kind of like when Wall Street people were coming in here. We were talking about this yesterday. When Wall Street people come into crypto, right, crypto becomes much more correlated with traditional assets because they hold both and they're trading on in similar manners or what they when they are trading, it's affecting both assets because they're both very liquid, right? So um, the, old, the advantage Hex has, right, is that it has periods of illiquidity, right? And when are those periods of illiquidity? Basically now through the summer, right? And if we go back and we look at Hex in previous times, right, um, just in this, this move here in 2021, right? Um, it basically mo made a move here from uh, April, right? April, mid-April, all the way here, right, through September. And that's its period of highest illiquidity. Most stakes not coming out. Most people who are holding long-term can't sell during that period, right? Now, if we looked for uh, that period last year, right, you did have uh, the opposite happen. You had a big downwards move, but then it subsided here around that mid-summer period. So whatever selling you could have was muted. So it doesn't mean, you know, during the summer times, Hexus has to go up, but whatever move it's going to make, right, it's going to propel it higher short term if it does want to move to the upside. And if it moves to the downside, it will only be able to do that for a certain period of time. Um, before it stops. and it So basically you have more chance for upside than downside is the main uh, equation there with how long-term uh, hex stakes might go, right? And the other thing we can understand is that we want more coins here because we're buying more hex right now, right? That means um, we're going to get our free P hex on the pulse chain side. And so going back to today's question, right? You guys, maybe a lot of you guys who are newer uh, over the last one year, you've been getting into crypto, you had zero access to pulse chain and pulse X. So the best way for you to get it, right? Is to buy hex, hold it at these cheap prices. If we go a little bit lower, right? That's actually a good thing. You can buy more, right? And then you can basically get your free copies of PHEX. Now, that's going to be a token, right? That, uh, like a one for one. So every hex, you get one PHEX over there, but it might be like 10%, right? Of uh, US dollar value. And then eventually it may um, equate, right? But let's take a look here. So we'll go back here. Uh, so I, I like talking about price, but let's go back and talk about fundamentals. And then we'll talk about early, um, what do you call it? Early stage coins that you guys can look at for 
how hex, pulse, p hex, uh, pulse x, uh, and these types of coins might act in their early days, right? So again, right, this type of negativity will keep uh, the whales able to accumulate, right? Even though the community is supporting, um, there's going to be some people in the background being like, oh man, it's selling some hex, right? So um, that's that's one to pay attention to, right? Uh, another one here, right, which is actually positive. So uh, a little honey with that vinegar from Richard Hart says, Pulse Chain V3 is nearly uh, is nearly perfectly working, uh, a nearly perfectly working network doing massive throughput right now as we speak. Pulse X is working great too. Most of crypto would kill to have something anywhere close to as good as what we have right now. Decentralized smart contracts burning everything, right? And so um, this is important because uh, essentially, right, um, this is great. Everything is going well. So V3 is great. Uh, we might need a V4, but that's really just to probably take a last few bugs, right? Very, very last few bugs. And yeah, maybe he doesn't even need a V4. Maybe Richard's just testing the patience of the community. And he says, when shall I bequeath your pulse chain, right? Um, and maybe he's just waiting for everybody to be like chill and not, and kind of give up. And then at that point of total capitulation, then he launches. That'd be hilarious, right? Um, but I wouldn't be surprised by that either, knowing who he is, right? But anyways, um, pulse chain V3, right? It's working great. So you, you don't really have to worry. You just be like, okay, it's still an accumulation time. We have Bitcoin holding up. We have the S&P uh, holding up as good as it can. Um, we have Hex then at very advantageous buying opportunities, most likely just over the next two weeks, but maybe maximum over the next one month, right? And then um, if Hex is going to make that massive pump this summer, right, it's most likely going to do so on top of Pulse Chain launching in either May or June. If it doesn't happen those two months, I would be surprised if Pulse Chain launched in July. And the only reason for that is because I think the price will start heading down uh, at some point in July and in August and September, right? And so um, when, and we're, we're looking at traditional markets and how that kind of works here. Um, so that's very possible. And if that happens, right, then... Um, hex will go down with that as well. And so will pulse chain. So you don't want to launch a new chain at the very peak because then just price goes down infinitely at the beginning. So let's do that. Let's pop out here. I'm going to pull up a, a chart and then we'll take a look at some newer coins, right? Coins that we've seen like uh, Hedron, but then we're also going to look at coins like uh, Granary, right? Um, possibly, hold on a second. Um, there we go. I'm going to pull that up here. Um, we're going to look at that because we have uh, eFiat coming out here in about a week. And so looking at early price action, I think is kind of important um, because a lot of people are like, well, what, what price is Pulse going to come out? What's Pulse X going to come out? Like, what are they going to do when they come out? There's a lot of different things that can happen. Um, so just understanding kind of the basics here uh, of what happens with a lot of coins when they come out, we'll take a look at uh, just a handful of cases that have happened over the last couple of years. And then you ha you can start overlaying kind of what were their similarities and differences and how will that line up with the current market? And therefore, uh, then if we get launch at these certain times, what can we expect?